part two <clears throat> of the HP 10 megahertz ovenized oscillator unit uh, 960-0150 <clears throat> the inside apologies for the miserable quality video but uh, here's the guts and the most interesting thing is that this the temperature is not controlled by thermostat it's not a simple thermostat it's a thermostat to indicate to indicate temperature it's um i measured the current and when the thing was up to full temperature disconnect the power supply reconnected almost 400 milliamp then it settles down to about 150 mils and regulates so the temperature is regulated which is probably what these transistors down here do but up here is the business end see the one of the piston trimmers here glass silver <clears throat> and on this side the 10 megahertz crystal and the other trimmer capacitor see the uh to the left of the silver plate see the two uh capacitor adjustments those go through 22 turns and when they're unscrewed completely counterclockwise the piston the yellow bit there comes back visible to the glass and this plate so it doesn't do anything and some chucklehead had unscrewed them all the way and i thought the things were broken i didn't re <coughs> excuse me didn't realize that it was 20 some turns i thought it was one or two so i don't recommend tearing it down this far i don't know if the crystal's replaceable if it's working what's the point um there's an uh, alignment here so that inductor stem in the center of the view there is more or less centered in that hole that's an initial adjustment and the 200 h apparently means 200 high because that's about how much it reads when it's cold so the principle here is to initially intentionally have the frequency off because the control system needs something to correct. If it starts off and stays at 10.000, then there's no point in the control circuit. <clears throat> so <clears throat> loosen those two screws <clears throat> and uh, move that plate so that stem's centered. The gold colored portion here is a metal cylinder looks like a waveguide and the heater wires are under these epoxy bands and there's a uh, probably a diode that's probably a diode temperature sensor I don't think that's a uh, thermocouple <clears throat> or, or a TDR temperature resistor uh, and terminations uh, 120 volts, 230 volts, 3 is RF cable. <coughs> Excuse me, it's an SMB, quick connect. 4 is ground, but not to the case. 5 is ground, but not to the case. And 6 is the output to the oven light on the front panel. And the red bar indicates do not apply excessive heat on this side at the bottom. Because that white there is the coax cable. From the oscillator unit to that connector and that's right up against that metal and it's a miracle that must be teflon because it's a miracle i didn't melt it trying to get it apart <clears throat> this thing's a booger to disassemble uh, on the outside of this are two foam pieces foam home et see it's so old the foam is breaking off and those go like that for insulation for the heat chamber <clears throat> and all that goes up into there and the far end are the plugs the plugs had o-rings i put flat buna seals on them <clears throat> and this unit's mounted suspended in foam on both ends 
for mechanical damping and we do not want this ground to the chassis because chassis ground is noisy as all get out. <clears throat> this is a shielded assembly. It was completely enclosed. And it does not have to be, contrary to theory, does not have to be grounded to be a shield. By electrostatic theory at least, if it's continuous in every direction, then the E fields cannot leak out, which implies neither can the M. So don't ground the can. There's a reason that the penultimate engineers that made this stuff made it like this without grounding this can. Except they grounded it there. <clears throat> so, some compromises in manufacturing. But um, this thing's real pigged on solder. Solder all the way around up inside there. And it takes a good bit of heat. So, uh, on that basis, I don't recommend doing that unless you really know what you're doing or if the thing's broken and you got no choice. But if the frequency just isn't reading right, very gently turn those trimmers all the way in and then unscrew them about eight turns and start over. Because when they're screwed almost all the way out, there's no capacitance and no capacitance change, so it looks like the screws don't do anything. If I'd known that, I wouldn't have had to take this apart, <clears throat> but live and learn. So that's about it from a practical level. Um, if anyone has stuff like this and it doesn't work, I can quite likely repair it. I have extreme experience in doing that. I used to take crystals apart and fix them. So, uh, 73K-BYP. Did it, did it, did it, did it.